Now, I'm not bullshitting when I say that this is the best Transformers movie I've ever seen. Like, I even brought my wife Whoa. with me to watch it last night. She's not a Transformers lady, and she loved it. So thank you guys very much. Thank you so much. Thank you, now, and thank her. <laughs> thank you. I, yeah, for sure. Um, now, Chris, there's this great trajectory in the film where you start as Orion Pax, but by the end, you are Optimus Prime. So did Peter Cullen have any thoughts or reactions to that final Optimus Prime voice we hear at the end of the film? <laughs> I don't know. I haven't spoken to or heard uh, his response. Um, I hope he's pleased. That, that was always the kind of, I guess, my apprehension or what was nerve wracking about stepping into the role was to try and just do Peter, what Peter Cullen had done. I didn't want to attempt to mimic that. So it was great to be able to have there be more levity and um, a playfulness and a sense of humor to the character that we hadn't seen before. But then toward the end of the film, as he becomes Optimus, to start to play with the cadence and, and the vocal quality um, that we, we know and love so much mm -hmm. that, that Peter, Peter's done. So um, it, it was a lot of fun. So Peter, call Chris. Please We, we need know. your seal. You we feel. need your gold star. <laughs> like, tell, tell him how you really feel. <laughs> now, Brian, as a voice actor, what did you find more challenging, you know, capturing the nuanced emotions of a character like Jeff Morales in Spider-Verse or finding this right, like that, like the intensity for a larger than life character like Megatron? Because they are two vastly different characters. They are. But I think that they're, the connection between the both of them is that their heart is kind of in the same place. Right. Like I. I knew going in at some point I was going to say the iconic I am Megatron or Decepticons rise up. I knew that that was going to come. But what I really love the most is like, well, where did he start? Like, where did he start? Like, you know, like to hear the levity in his voice, to hear the fear, to even hear Megatron be afraid of something, you know, and then the laughter, like to actually hear him have you know, a, a partner in crime and like to, to, for, to know that he was even a fan of mm. other primes, you know, is really cool to me. <clears throat> and so I, I always think about that when it comes to voicing, you know, like these animated characters is like, will you be able to feel their heart? Like at the end of the day, will you actually be able to understand who they are and see who their character is through what I'm performing? So that it was no different when coming to Megatron. Now, listen, when I when, when I got to become Megatron, okay, like it was all gloves off. Like it was <laughs> it was really, really cool. And it's also really cool to like sit in a theater and hear that, like, you know, when you when you say Optimus Prime, like it just resonates <laughs> through your chest. Like it's you know, so good. It's so good, man. And so it, it, it's so awesome to also know that these stories stand the test of time. You know, I think we're 40 years in with Transformers and to see the different iterations and like to see how, you know, for lack of a better word, how it's transformed is, yeah. is, is really incredible. So, yeah, I'm honored, honestly. Yeah, well, you guys knocked it out of the park, park. Like I said, I mean, it's 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 amazing. So uh, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I, like I said, I love thank the movie. You. So thank you guys. Thanks, Thanks so much. Hello, sir. It's Sue. It's nice to meet you, man. I I love the movie. I watched it last night with my wife and son, and it's literally the best Transformers movie I've ever seen. So thank you very much for your wow. time. Wow, that's awesome. Thank you. I'm so glad you enjoyed it, Chris. Yeah. Now, is there a petition that we can sign to permanently rename Bumblebee to Bad Acetron? <laughs> yeah, you start that up. You start that up and I will circulate that. OK, <laughs> I think we need to do it because Bad Acetron is such a better name. Now, did you actually get to use your voice for that one line? Yes, that is my it is my voice. I am the one saying Bad Acetron. That's me. Yeah, and we, it was funny. At one point in time, one of the producers told me, I think I had a screening. I was watching uh, an early cut of the film. And one of the producers said, you know, we didn't even have to, we, we didn't have to do anything to your voice. We have to put a filter on it or anything. And I was like, oh, good. I'm, I'm glad I didn't have to say it too many times because it's, it's, there's some stuff happening. Yeah, but just the way that you did it right now just blew my mind because I thought that there was there had to be so many effects on it. And then the way you just said it, I I'm just in awe right now. So very <laughs> talented, man. I don't did you like have to gargle gravel or anything? Right, to, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Lots that? of shards, broken glass, the whole nine the whole nine yards. Yeah, yeah. Broken glass now, and Jack I, Daniels. Yeah. Now what toys, you know, in the spirit of Transformers, what toys were you most obsessed with in the eighties? Um, I loved um Micronauts. Do you know what Micronauts are? Yeah. Yeah, I, ha I, I loved Micronauts. 
Um, and I loved G.I. Joe, uh, the, the smaller G.I. Joe figures from the cartoon. Those guys were amazing to me. And I read, you know, like I read the G.I. The funny thing is I, the serialized comics. So I'd read the G.I. Joe comics and the Transformers comics and stuff like that. But um, Micronauts, G.I. Joe's, I, and when I was a kid, I had a Shogun Warrior. Do you know what a Shogun Warrior is? I don't remember Shogun Warriors, no. Yeah, I mean, th there's those like 70s toys that you 100% can't have now where, you know, like you'd lift the arms and you could press a button and the, like a hard plastic fist would shoot off of them. <laughs> You know, like they just, they, you know, and they didn't stop making, I guess, when did they stop making those? Mid 80s or late 80s, they stopped I'm making sure. those toys. I, my, I remember Micronauts because that was my first heartbreak because I was about four years old and my little brother flushed all of my Micronauts down the toilet. Oh no. And just, it just ruined me. It just set me on a path for the rest of my life of heartbreak. <laughs> uh, and now, here you are if, now, right, yeah. Here we are. Now, if you could choose either to be your sidekick, would you pick Bumblebee or Toad? I think I think that I would pick Bumblebee solely because I'm from Detroit and I could just at any time tell Bumblebee turn into a Camaro right now so I can drive you. And uh, you know <laughs> so I have to I mean I've got to I got to stay true to my roots, you know what I mean? I can actually drive him around. Toad is so small. I'm not quite sure exactly what he can do for me. You know what it I mean? It feels offensive to say that Toad would be a great pet, but I, I do think that there's more useful uh, uh, things you can do with Bumblebee. I agree, 100%. Now, agree. I do say, speaking of Toad, what's the status of this Super Mario Brothers sequel? Like, have you been able to read the script yet? Because that is also a movie I am very excited for. I uh, am not, I'm not sure, oh boy, I'm not sure what I can tell you about that. I'm so sorry. Um, I don't, huh, Sean, do you know what, I can't, Super Mario Brothers? was that announced? I, let's err on the side of caution. Sorry, Chris, uh, yeah, we're going to err on the side of caution. I, 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 uh, I will have to tell you next time. Sounds great, yeah, man. Yeah. It was a pleasure meeting you. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you it, too. sir. Thank, thank you, and thank you, and I, I appreciate your wife and son watching with you. I appreciate it. So, guys, I'm not bullshitting when I say that this is the best Transformers movie I've ever seen. I loved it. It was fantastic. Thank you so much for your time. Fantastic. Thank you. Now, assuming audiences are going to love this as much as I did, and they will, are you guys planning on calling the sequel Transformers 2? 2 is spelled out, obviously. <laughs> for year two? <laughs> Transformers 1, 2. <laughs> we have no idea what the one is. You know, the funny thing about, uh, well, not even funny, but the, the reality, I think, when you make a really good movie, if you have your eyes on the next one, you're in trouble. Because it's so hard to make one really good movie. So really, we've never talked about a title and, no. and, and probably won't talk about a title until we figure out really the whole story. That's fair enough. And, you know, as somebody who does a lot of movies, something I was curious about. Now, the Energon universe in comics is aimed at adults and way more brutal, right? So, Lorenzo, is an R-rated Transformers film anything you'd ever be open to, or do you plan on keeping them all family-friendly in the future? I, look, I love new boundaries, you know, so that, for me, it sounds really fun to be able to do something like that, but the truth of the matter is these cost a lot of money, and you know, we these movies are supposed to be designed for everybody, all audience. And so I'd like to keep it there and, and make sure that we don't disappoint or freak out some of our fans <laughs> by going in a different direction, you know? Um, it'd be fun creatively, but I'm not sure it, it's something that we, would be healthy for us to do, actually. Yeah, I agree with that. And I know what you mean, the, the Skybound ones are, uh, they're, the illustrations are gorgeous, but I mean, just I love reading those. And they, they're intense, but uh, I, I, I agree with that. Yeah. I've been talking to Kirkman about it, you know, and it's interesting because he, he's a huge Transformers fan, obviously. Mm -hmm. And it's we're, we, we use him, we pick his brain now and again just to sort of get a sense of, of where his head's at and where he thinks a live action one should list. Uh, real quick, Lorenzo, last time we talked at uh, Comic-Con, you told me a Constantine II script was being written. So I wanted to follow up about the progress of that and if you've been able to read it yet or not. You know, it's in my inbox right now, funny enough. Uh, I'm, I'm too scared to read it, though. I, I want it to be good so bad. Uh, I'll probably read it in the next few days when I get on an airplane. I'll sign an NDA if you want me to read it for you. I'm happy to do it. <laughs> 
every person. <laughs> I know. I love that. <laughs> Me and Josh will just take turns. Uh, totally. No, uh, Josh, speaking of, of the next one, I know you guys said that that's, you know, far in the future, but is there a specific Transformer in mind that you're really excited to introduce in the future, a new toy in the box, if you will, that you didn't get to play with in this one? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it. Okay. On that I note, know one uh, thing. My son wants me to revisit Ironhide. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Because <laughs> we killed him. I know he was so him. furious with us. <laughs> I think your son's got a, got a great idea there. I think that you should, you should do that. Um, now, are there intentions for this to lead into the live action films, or do you both view this as being unrelated to those films? You know, the... The way that I, starting this as an origin story, it was great to go, no, nothing's been done. We've never seen this before, right? We've never started like this before. There's obviously a story of what's happened in the past or what we know will happen. What's, a war will happen, they'll go to Earth. That's just part of Transformers. That's part of every version of Transformers that happens. And the thing that I, I'm kind of excited about moving forward is like we can tell the same story and do things slightly differently. The same way we started slightly differently. There's so many different continuities, so many different you know, video games. It's just a huge sandbox. And so uh, it's a, I think it's a prequel to the same type of events, but maybe in the future they're different. How, how's that for a very vague non-answer? I think it'd be really hard and complicated to have a direct link, but I think what'll happen is there's indirect things that are gonna happen. Um, so, for instance, you know, it, Josh did such a great job in actualizing the characters in this movie, and it is going to have an impact on the live action where we can't not meet that bar, you know. So it won't be necessarily literally a character or literally an event, but it has an effect on what we're going to do. And I think the same thing with live action is, you know, you see what we've done and you want to do something different and you also see where it can be successful. And I think that's where the two universes help each other. You know, you can see like, oh, that actually works. Okay, you could mm. do that in either one. But I think the fun of it for me as a filmmaker is keeping them separate. No, I, I agree with you totally. I'm also out of time, but I loved it so much. You guys knocked it out of the park. I love the way you guys did this. It's so smart. So thank you very much for your time, guys. Thank you. Thank you.